After covering the T-72B3 several weeks ago, it's only fair we take a look at the other top tier Soviet main battle tank. If you've been a long time subscriber of my channel, you'll already know just how much I like the T-80U, a tank which scared the NATO powers in real life just as much as it scares NATO players in War Thunder. The tank combines a deadly cannon, high mobility, as well as strong frontal armour, arguably making this tank the most powerful main battle tank in War Thunder. Alright lads, today I'm going to be talking about the performance weapons and playstyle of the T-80U. Starting as always with the basics, this vehicle is a rank 7 battle rating 10.7 medium tank located in the Soviet tech tree. Being a rank 7 tech tree vehicle, it will of course come stock and you'll have to upgrade it to unlock its full potential. It will also only be effective at researching other vehicles between the ranks of 6 and 7 and for the Soviet tech tree, that ranges from the second generation main battle tanks right up to the modern Soviet vehicles. To unlock this tank, you'll have to grind out 390,000 research points before purchasing the tank for a cost of 1,020,000 silver lions. After this, you'll have to add the tank to your lineup for another cost of 290,000 silver lions. You can then additionally purchase the expert and ace qualifications of the tank, costing 1,020,000 silver lions and 2,100 golden eagles respectively. Due to the economic stagnation under bloody Brezhnev, the workers of the world cannot produce this tank cheaply, giving it an incredibly high repair cost of 12,789 silver lions. So don't die, comrade. Going on to the rewards, and the vehicle has a base RP modifier of 2.32, which gives you an RP modifier of 232% with a free to play account and 464% with a premium account. Your base silver line modifier of 1.5 is pretty high, but with the repair cost also being incredibly large, you can't really afford to take many risks in this vehicle. You can expect a 150% silver line modifier with a free to play account and 225% with a premium account. Taking a quick look at the customization, and we have several camouflages available to purchase, including woodland, desert, and winter camouflages with my personal favourite being the late green. Like usual, we'll start with an overview of the vehicle, followed by some live commentary, and finally ending with a conclusion. Starting with the engine and performance, and the T-80U is powered by a gas turbine engine producing 1,250 horsepower. Combined with the T-80U's weight of 46 tonnes, this engine gives you a power to weight ratio of 27.2 horsepower per tonne. This is absolutely excellent and allows you to get pretty much anywhere on the battlefield. This mobility, as well as the tank's pretty small size, makes you an incredibly fast and small moving target. Moving on to the transmission, and the tank also has an excellent top speed of 70 km per hour, and with that great power to weight ratio, you will hit this top speed pretty quickly on all types of terrain. One downside of the T-80U is its pretty poor reverse speed of 11 km per hour. It is much better than T-72B's 4 km per hour, but compared to NATO tanks, it's still very disappointing. However, in real life, this isn't an issue, as no glorious Soviet armoured brigade would ever need to reverse. Like all other Soviet main battle tanks, the T-80U is unable to neutral steer, meaning it can't turn on the spot. This is technically a negative, but due to the tank's high power to rate ratio, you can still whip the tank around pretty quickly. Overall, I have no real criticism of this tank's mobility. The reverse speed is a bit of an issue, but if you've made it to rank 7 of the Soviet tech tree, or played literally any British vehicle in the game, then I'm guessing you've already got used to not having a reverse speed. Apart from this issue, the top speed is excellent, and so is the acceleration. Your small stature allows you to hide in places the larger NATO main battle tanks couldn't, and your insane mobility allows you to zip around the battlefield and generally piss everyone off. Moving on to the armour and survivability, and the first thing to mention is that this tank only has a crew of 3 men, with 1 in the hull and 2 in the turret. This gives you pretty poor survivability if a round actually penetrates your armour, especially if the round was fired into the side of the T-80. Not only are the 2 crew members in the turret lined up, you also have a huge autoloader which will detonate if a round hits it. As a general rule for all tanks, but especially with the T-80, always keep your frontal hull facing where you think the enemies will be. This is because the frontal hull and turret of the T-80 are protected by several layers of composite armour, as well as Contact 5 explosive reactive armour. The Contact 5 blocks cover a substantial portion of both the hull and turret, and provide 120mm of armour protection against kinetic energy penetrators, as well as 450mm of chemical protection. These blocks, in combination with the already thick composite armour, give you incredible frontal protection. This explosive reactive armour is also present on the sides of the hull, but due to the lack of composite armour here, the armour protection is substantially less. Moving on to the armour protection itself, and to test this, we'll be using the CL3143 round. This is substantially more powerful than the rounds fired by the M1A2 and the Leopard 2A5. But with the Leopard 2A6 coming to the game shortly, I want to demonstrate how the armour of the T-80U will most likely perform in the future update. Starting as always with the lower frontal plate, and we have around 200mm of protection. As we move upwards, protection does increase up to around 590mm. As you can clearly see, this round won't protect you from the newer high penetration APF-SDS rounds, but against the common enemies, such as the Abrams and Challengers, it is more than enough to bounce incoming rounds. 
leading to the driver's port area, which is the main frontal weak spot of all Soviet main battle tanks, and you can see it is a pretty easy penetration, with only 200mm of effective protection. Moving up to the turret, and as you can see, the addition of contact 5 plates give you well over 700mm of protection. However, on the flatter parts of the turret, which don't get ERA blocks, protection drops significantly. You can see here, just above the machine gun port, protection is only around 500mm of armour. While the older main battle tanks in games such as the Abrams or Challengers wouldn't be able to penetrate this, the newer tanks coming in the new update will. Granted, this is a pretty small target, and the majority of the turret is well protected. Like all other main battle tanks, the gun breach is a weak spot, providing only around 100mm of armour. Moving to the side of the tank, and the hull is split into two sections, with the first half protected by additional contact 5 blocks giving it around 180mm of protection. However, the engine compartment towards the rear of the vehicle doesn't get this, and only has around 90mm of protection. Moving up to the turret, and if we look at a side profile, you can see that half the turret is still protected by ERA blocks. This gives this area of the turret well over 600mm of armour, and even the parts of the turret without ERA still offer between 250 to 300 mm of armour. And finally, the rear of the turret offers around 65mm of protection, and the rear of the hull only 30mm. Overall, in the current meta of War Thunder, the T-80U is probably one of the most well-protected main battle tanks in the game, giving you protection from pretty much all NATO guns. However, in the next update, New Power, the Leopard 2A6 may change this, but even then, it is just one tank. The T-80U will remain incredibly powerful versus the majority of tanks in the game. When it comes to the armour protection of the T-80U, I have no real criticism. Moving on to the weapons and ammunition, and as you can see the T-80U is armed with the 125mm 2A46M1 cannon. The gun is fully stabilised, but has a limited vertical guidance characteristics, with an acceptable 15 degrees of gun elevation, but a terrible 5 degrees of gun depression. The tank carries 45 rounds in total, and features a 22 round autoloader. If we take a look at the reloading score under the loader section, and due to our autoloader, we have a constant 6.5 second reload speed. While this reload isn't as fast as some NATO tanks, most Western MBTs need highly trained crews to get under the 6 second reload mark, whereas the T-80U's reload isn't affected by this skill, making the tank very friendly to low skill crews. Moving on to the targeting score under the gunner section, and we can see that you have a base turret rotation speed of 17 degrees per second, which rises to 24 degrees per second with an ace crew. This is slower than most NATO tanks, but I personally never found it to be too much of an issue. Next we move on to the modifications, and I want to point out that this tank gets access to a laser rangefinder, as well as first generation thermal imaging for the gunner. The commander of this tank is stuck with night vision and nothing more. This is one area where the T-72B3 has an advantage, as its gunner sight gets access to the higher resolution generation 3 thermals. Apart from the first gen thermals, the T-80U does get a nice wide field of view in the gunner sight, as well as a base 2.7x zoom and an optional 12x zoom. Moving on to the ammunition, and we have 5 rounds available, 2 stock and 3 unlockable. Your first round is a 3BK 18M Heat FS round. It travels at a muzzle velocity of 905m per second and can penetrate 550mm of armour at all angles. Not a bad stock round, but you'll never use it again after you unlock your first fin round. Your second stock shell, and your go-to meme round, is a 3 OF26 high explosive shell. It has a slower muzzle velocity of 850m per second and can penetrate 42mm of armour with its warhead containing 5.2kg of TNT. Luckily for people grinding out the T-80U, you do get an APFSDS round as a tier 1 modification. This is a 3BM22 shell. It has a high muzzle velocity of 1740m per second and can penetrate 425mm of armour. Not a bad round by any means. Like several other Soviet tanks, you do get access to a barrel launch missile, in the T-80U's case, the 9M119. This travels at a speed of 400m per second and can penetrate 700mm of steel armour. Unlike the T-72B3 missile, the 9M119 does not feature a tandem warhead, meaning explosive reactive armour will defeat this missile. And finally, your last unlockable round is the 3BM42 shell. This is the famous Mango round. It travels at 1,700m per second and can penetrate 479mm of armour. This is a great round which creates plenty of spalling, allowing you to one-shot pretty much anything with good shot placement. The T-80U also features a coaxially mounted rifle caliber machine gun, as well as a pinto mounted 12.7mm machine gun fired by the commander. You also have 8 smoke grenades, which fire 4 at a time, giving you 2 smoke screens. Overall, I have no criticisms of the firepower of this tank. It has a fast reload, high penetration rounds, and a pretty decent fire control system. Its 5 degrees of gun depression could be better, but that's being fairly picky. The lack of better thermal imaging, or even commander's thermals, is arguably the biggest weakness of the T-80 series. While I somewhat agree with this, I still consistently get good results playing this tank in both sim and ground realistic.
To conclude, I still think that the TATU is the best main battle tank currently in War Thunder, and I think it will remain the best tank. While the Leopard 2A6 will offer a better gun, we already have tanks such as the Arietta in game. Apart from the slightly better armour, the Leopard 2A6 isn't much different, and I don't see it being meta changing in War Thunder. In both realistic and sim battles, it is mobility that is the most important aspect of a tank's success. Being able to move around the battlefield in good time is what makes vehicles such as the X and 1 and the R3 so powerful. They don't have lots of armour or high power guns but their mobility negates this, allowing them to get on their enemy's flanks and use their mediocre guns to good use. The TATU is different. It has high mobility, a powerful gun and good armour protection. This combination makes it absolutely lethal in a firefight and I don't think that the Leopard 2A6 or the T90A is going to dethrone the TATU as the king of the battlefield. At the time of recording I still think we are several weeks away from the upcoming new power update and for anyone coming up to the end of the 6th rank of the Soviet tech tree and is trying to figure out which rank 7 to grind first, I would seriously consider grinding out the TATU, at least if you care about in-game performance. There is no doubt in my mind that the TATU is better than the T72B3, at least in terms of the gameplay of War Thunder. However, as you've probably seen from the dev server footage, the T90A will follow on from the T72B3. So if you don't care about the TATU and just want to grind out the T90A, then starting grinding out the T72 series is obviously the logical choice. But if you want the tank that has the best mobility, firepower and armour, I would wholeheartedly suggest you grind out the TATU. It's important to remember that this is just my opinion. What do you guys think about this tank? If you have any criticisms, positive or negative, I would even like to request a review. Please feel free to leave a comment below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the T80. I had a lot of fun getting the footage for this video and hopefully if I've done my job correctly, you should have learned something new about this tank. If you do enjoy these sort of videos, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. But more importantly, lads, I hope you have a great day and thank you very much for watching.